Thank you for joining me in my sewing room studio. So just to give you a bit of a background about who I am, I am a uh, former bridal stylist. Uh, I have turned a designer for the past couple of years and I've learned the very hard truth of the fashion industry. Fashion industry is very tough place to enter. So I end up with a lot of samples from my collection and then I stopped and went into real estate industry because I thought I need something that gives me money. And now I actually quit real estate industry altogether and went back to sewing full time. So I've researched for the past couple of years, couple of stores, and I managed to find something that I can find within the two, three dollar for, uh, for a yard, even five dollars for some laces. This particular lace here is really not one of the fancy, but what I like about it, it's a four way stretch lace and it's very forgiving. So for an experienced sewer, it's an absolutely brilliant way to start. I'm actually in the process of adjusting my sewing studio once again. So most likely within a couple of months, I'm gonna come back with an update of what's going to be and how it's going to change. I have to find something because especially the lining and all the satin fabrics being so shiny, they always tend to fall. They they slide, it becomes a quick, huge mess. And they really gives me such an anxiety. And so I don't really have them organized by color or by fabric yet. I might come to do that one day if, if I do have time. This is a wool. So I have gray and I also have this lighter brown that I found in a store for like about $4.99 per yard. I'm actually working currently on a full jacket that I hope I'm gonna finish soon. I also do buy a lot of fleas. I have random colors uh, throughout my entire sewing studio just because my younger son, who is now five, loves characters that he sees on YouTube that I know for sure we cannot buy. And just because he actually loves them for such a short time, I hate to invest money in 20, 30, $40 uh, characters that I can find on Amazon. And so I usually buy fleas. Uh, and I have a feeling, a uh, feeling for dolls at Joanne are actually really, really cheap. And if you do sign up for Joanne membership, you're actually going to get a lot of coupons. Joanne, in my opinion, it's actually really, really expensive. I don't really like to buy a lot of fabrics from there. I did discover sophisticated fabric. They have some amazing prices. This tool though, if you do need tool, this is not the best quality tool, but the tool shop, uh, I can buy a 40 yards, uh, 50, I believe it's 56 width. I can buy this for like $5.99. It's not the best tool, but I do make a lot of children's dresses. And this is so useful for me because I can mix with some cheap organza and kids are growing fast. They don't need luxury clothes. In thread, uh, thread is usually very expensive at Joanne. I do have a bit of a collection here. I do tend to mix a little bit. I have to admit, I have to go and refresh my collection. I need at least another 20, 30 spools. I buy them from Sophisticated Fabric for like $2.99. And this is, I believe it's 2,000 yards. I wouldn't really be able to tell you right now. But they do have this huge spools for my serger, for my overlocker, but I also use it in my normal sewing machine because it's kind of easy. Uh, right here, as you can see, I do a lot of drawing. I do a lot of, a lot of sketching. I take a lot of notes. This is how I'm creating all my stuff. And then I create, sometimes I create patterns. Sometimes I just do uh, draping, which is probably my number one favorite technique to create. I do have a collection of ribbons as well. It's not too big. When I'm creating my little girl's dresses, I use a lot of ribbon for marking the waist, making a little bit cuter. I do like to make uh, little flowers as well, making some sort of 3D elements. Kids absolutely love it. Sometimes I put some rhinestones here in the middle and I create some amazing... I actually have, I believe I have somewhere Oh, I do have here kind of like an example of what I'm creating. This is a bridal belt for a very simple sheath dress that I made for one of my friends. I allow her to wear this, but I took it back because I need it for a future project. So this is my fabric collection. As you can see, I have a lot of chiffons. I have a lot of jersey. I do love to work with jersey. I do personally wear a lot of jerseys. Um, I think they're really amazing. I did make something out of this. This is very new. This is probably less than about 
I would say two weeks, I found it. It's sophisticated fabric for $2.99. I have about probably I'll say 30 yards here altogether. It's not thick, it's very thin. I do like to use my netting because I have flower girl dresses that I made. I have some first communion dresses that I made and this is really good, useful for me. Right here on Organize, I have my pile of fabrics that are leftovers, that I had some yardage that I sewed and then all of a sudden, it doesn't really, like I don't, it's enough for me to use it for something else later, but I also feel bad to throw away fabric. This is my computer area. Sometimes I work late in the night when my kids are going to bed. It's easy for now me. Now I have all my tags for all the uh, fashion show that I attend. Magic is the one that I absolutely love to attend. Another one, it's Tex World. It's one that goes um, in New York every year. Right here, I have all my sewing tables are Ikea tables. Ikea tables, just because they're simple to use, you, you can take the legs off and then you can keep, you know, moving them around as you want. For my, my cutting table, I'm right now in a process of adjusting one of the Ikea tables with some felt. I'm going to make something that you know, with all the chiffons and the satins that I work with, that is not going to slide because it becomes an issue when you want to cut exactly. Um, if you don't have something that will stop the fabric from sliding down, it's really frustrating. Why I, what I held about the black felt is that it actually collects all the dust and the hair from my dog and my cat. My cat likes to lie on it a lot, but I also have to clean it. This is the way it is. I'm probably going to end up buying a different color just so it doesn't look as messy. Right here, I have my measuring tools. Probably I should collect some more. Let me clean up. I I'm working on a project at the moment. Uh, actually, I'm working on two project projects at the moment. One is for me, one is for my friend. She's going to a wedding. This is my cutting mat. What I didn't know, and I just learned recently, and I'm going to give you this tip as well. Every now and then, soak this mat into a bath with the warmer water. Let it soak overnight. So it kind of like, I didn't, I really didn't know that. I didn't I didn't think that they're going to dry and crack. Uh, and so I used it the other day for some leather work and I bang and I hammered and whatnot. And next thing I know, I have a crack in it. So I put it into the overnight in the bath with the warmer water and now it's perfectly fine. So this is a very good trick for you to have your mat recovered. I started recently doing some leather work so I needed something that I can bang and so I bought this one at Marshall. So I'm using this one as you can see has marks here for my leather tools but in the meantime it works. I might have to find something else but for now it works. My sewing machine. As you can see here I have a serger. It's more of a basic serger. It's a brother DZ1234. It's so easy to thread. It's incredibly easy to thread. Let me just turn this light so it's easier so you can see better. So it's so easy to thread. Of course, it's a heavily used sewing machine for the past six months. Probably needs a bit of a cleaning. Um, it's easy to adjust the tensions as well. It's probably one of the best serger that you could pick and I think at the time when I decided to start sewing a couple of years ago, it would have been under $200, but it's totally worth it. I have never had to service this machine and I've used it for absolutely everything. This is my to-go serger. It's perfect for this money. I don't think I could do, even as a professional sewer, unless I will make a ton of money, I would think in doing some industrial one. But for now, if you are a beginner, into sewing and you decide just to kind of like dip your feet into something, this is going to be the best. Now going to my sewing machine, my sewing machine and the absolute best machine I could find. It's a Brother SE400, an embroidery unit, which unfortunately I don't use as much as I should, but you can easily remove this part here and then the embroidery parts part comes all the way around here you have another foot embroidery foot that you can use they give you everything you want i don't even know where my embroidery unit is to be honest with you because i don't use it again you have 67 stitches uh, it's very easy to set your stitches you go around you can even 
set the 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 length and the width of your of your stitches so it's so easy to work with again i've never had any issues this is my very first sewing machine when i originally started back in 2014 and i think it was probably about 200 dollars at the time again never had any issues the only thing that I have to change because I'm a very fast sewer and I lose patience easily and I start pulling fabric sometimes if I feel like it's going too slow, it's my bobbin case. And you find them probably on Amazon for like $15 or $10 or something. When you, If you ever decide to purchase a sewing machine, uh, make sure you have bobbin cases as a backup. I find that that's the, that's the part that I have to change the most so this is my sewing machine to go to so this is just a commercial small sewing machine but for for wherever i am right now it works absolutely magic i haven't tried leather on it yet i do a lot of leather by hand uh, with hand stitches and i just remembered to show you my leather collection so i usually buy my leather collection uh, in hide uh, I usually find for like $99 for a huge hide. Right here, I have a couple of projects. Uh, I have some gray leather. At the moment, I'm also working a pocketbook. Um, I, and I'm experiencing with um, hand stitches. I do love working with leather. And I, I feel like it's something that I'm going to take on as a project. And I'm going to learn as much as I can. I do love things made by leather. So this is my leather collection. As you can see, I do have a lot of leather in here. It's just that I don't really have as much time to work on my leather. My other sewing machine, it's an industrial sewing machine. It's a Juki and I believe it's the L8700. I haven't set it up yet. It's still in a basement. My uh, when we just when we moved into this house, I just set up this studio because I really wanted to work somewhere and I needed something straight away. I forgot to mention to you this sewing machine, the Brother um, SE400 doesn't have a pedal, which I think to me, it's absolutely amazing. I love that I don't have to press on a pedal all the time. However, my serger has a pedal. So the pedal is right here at the bottom. As you can see with all my wires, sometimes having a pedal could be really frustrating. I have to move everything from underneath. And I'm telling you as a sewer, you need a lot of simplicity. You need something to move fast in between. Most likely I'm going to replace this sewing table into another corner. Uh, the industrial sewing machine is very heavy, has its own table. Uh, it's more complex, needs oil as well all the time. You can run it without oil. You can risk off breaking it. Now comes down to my notions. I do have a huge collection of notions. Now, remember, I started back in 2014. I stopped for a little bit to do real estate, but then I came back. Originally, I'm actually a interior designer. Uh, I study interior design. I worked probably for about three years. Then I got married, had kids, stopped. And then I realized that I need something to do with my life. But I also didn't want to go back as a junior interior uh, designer to carry someone's uh, bags around and bring their coffee. So I decided to take a hike and find something else for my life. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of like a lot of little things in here that I use. I have a lot of buttons and I have a lot of beads. Uh, a lot sometimes uh, things are falling off bridal gowns and they have to be replaced bridal buttons and all sorts of other things right here i'm trying to keep my sewing machine stuff all organized and so i have a collection of sewing machine foot here i have needles so i have a lot of pins here you can never have enough pins as you can see next we have a very small collection of tools for leather i literally just started working on leather and i picked up a couple of things that i think i might be able to use and um, the things that i am going to need this is the the waxed uh, thread that I just learned to work. A couple of tools here. Of course, probably there would be a lot more that I need, 
but as of right now i'm actually just starting it's a brand new project for me so i need to take it easy so um i'm also a very frugal person as you can see so all these containers that i picked up for uh, i believe was a dollar store so i must have paid a dollar for a set of three because i do have three and i that's the only way i can explain how i end up with three they must have been a dollar for three i think it's something that i don't like to spend a lot of money a container it's a container it doesn't have to be fancy to hold all my notions and it does its job right i mean I'm, one more than that can i want this is a tag gun remember i told you i'm actually selling things and i need to place my labels this is back in uh when i was doing my production samples in china they were sending back my styles with my SKU numbers um this used to be my brand maybe i will in the end of this video i will put a lookbook to my collection to see what i was doing it's a bit of a painful memory for me it was a painful journey to come up with the whole collection to make samples i also got my samples really late and it was um, i was a little bit late for the selling season these are my labels that i used to add into my stuff as you can see again a lot of clips uh, snaps and just more glue you can never have enough glue in a studio right here i have my zippers i recently started working on my zippers collection as well i always love to have a zipper collection all the colors all the length i've also just re uh, recently learned how expensive how expensive these uh, metal zippers are so i need to find a source again i used to have a book a notebook with all the sources where i used to buy my notions and my zippers and stuff so i need to find that so i can just go ahead and order a bunch i also used to do a lot of um sourcing trips to new york just because it's only three hours away from me and i used to just go and spend four five hundred dollars mainly on notions um which is very hard for me if i go to new york and i go into the garment district not to go and pick up like a million of yards that i might not even need right here i have some collection of something that i can use like appliques um and so on as you can see this one i think i picked up in one of the new york trips it was only like three dollars uh, so this is something that see these patches I use them for babies onesies and so um, all this is including um, stick on beads and pearls and stuff like that so this is my fun drawer next we have ribbons and I also have some bias tape I do like to have bias tape I think I used to have, yeah, I do have a lot of bias tape as well, all sorts of colors, ribbons. Oh, well, I do have some bus cup here. I don't know why. And this one I'm usually using when I um, send, when I ship stuff away. I do make some nice packaging with some organza. Um, I have some organza that I'm going to show you. I bought for like $3 for 40 yards, but I'm using it mainly for bags. So I make some nice bags. I make this as a is a closure and it looks all nice and cute again ribbon bits and pieces bridal stuff and all whatnot right here i have my elastic collection and i also have the horsehair braid i do use a lot of horsehair horsehair braid remember i do flower girl dresses and kids dresses and whatnot i also do some bridal every now and then so this is my horse braid a uh, horse braid i buy from new york I have a seller that I know and it's on my speed dial. And if I need horsehair braid, then this is going to be my source. Now I have my permanently set up here, my um, ironing board. I do like to iron every seam and everything that I sew, I like to press straight away because I think it settles so much better. Now, right now, I this one, it's on wheel. I think I bought it at Walmart for like $15. So no matter where my dress form is, this is my actual setup. This is where, this is following me around my sewing studio based on my needs. I always have my scissors here. I have my, I have my measuring tape. I have blades. 
Uh, I think I work better with these blades to open seams than with the seam ripper because I don't see that well, but when I put a line and a magnifier, I think that's going to work a lot better. Um, I do use this a lot when I work on work on leather. And um, I also, this is really, hang on. This is helping me a lot when I work with um, scuba. Uh, most of the time, if you work with scuba, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, scuba, it's very hard to cut. Or to, if you make a hem, uh, it's going to look bulky. I prefer to keep a raw edge instead of a sewn hem. And so cutting it with this is going to give me a very straight, nice edge. So this is an absolute necessary if you wear, if you work with leather, if you work with scuba. And it does help in general other fabrics. It does help a lot. So it's very good to have one. I think I didn't pay that much. Again, I bought a Joanne for with coupon or Amazon or somewhere. But it's very good to have it. Set up your sewing room with basics. Don't start throwing money on random things at once. Also chalk. I use for a lot of darker fabric. I, I used to have different colors. Now I only have pink and white. I have a lot of backup scissors. I think I have about nine, ten. I don't know how many I have uh, because I think I need them. So again, this, these are things that I love to make for the little girl dresses. This is probably a drawer with a lot of leftovers. Again, remember I told you I have issues when throwing away stuff. I like to keep for just in case. And I think this is when I knew... This is when I knew that most likely I have a sewing bug and I need to give it more attention. Now, what you can see here, what you can see here, it's my dress form. That's my dog. My dress form, I'm actually trying to fix it. So I bought this form back in 2000, a dress form back in 2014. It's a, a pinnable dress form so which I absolutely love so I can only work with dress that are full pinnable I also have a kids one uh, that I use and it's the same fabric and it's the same foam so they're fully pinnable absolutely love it because when I take pictures of my projects it looks so nice and clean however my base got broke in some way and so this started to wiggle a lot and it would lean to about 20 degrees. And that was so, so bothering me so much because I could not work anything that was straight. So I decided to take some glue and my, <laughs> my, uh, my glue, glue to the carpet. I don't even know why I have a carpet in a sewing room, but never mind. So I might have to deal with this later. Anyway, I use this um, construction adhesive to put something here. It's still settled, so I can't use it at the moment. But I like this dress form because it's actually adjustable. You can make it as high as you want. You can, as you can see, you can put take it out and put pants on. So I love it. I will have to maybe buy another one. I hope not. They usually come about. 120 to 140 the kids one i paid for about 60 dollars so this is my sewing room studio at the moment i'm going to probably change a little bit more because i need more functionality i'm uh, i'm back to it now full time i will increase my collection hopefully i'll come up with a system where my fabrics are going to stay in place a little bit better so i don't have to fix the pile every time i come up with the with an idea and i want to get some fabric from right in the middle hopefully my dress form is going to work just fine and i'm going to be able to use it again i wouldn't want to go and pay another 140 dollars to buy a brand new one but i guess if i don't have choice i will do it as you can see all my notions are usually just against the wall somewhere about around my sewing machine just so it make my life easier if you can find something like those drawers on the wheels follow you around next to your dress form one side to another flipping around to drape and whatnot you just have your little drawers following you. I, as I promised in the end of this video, I'm going to upload my 
lookbook with my collection just for you to see who I am as a creator, as a designer and as a seamstress as well. And I hope you have an amazing day and thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you got some inspiration and I wait back for you right here because I'm going to have so many projects coming up. I'm so excited that I'm back to sewing. I'm so happy I got away from real estate to do my sewing again. Wish you all a, have an amazing day. And if you decide to start a passion that's been with you for a while and you wanted and you always had second thoughts, just do it. Do it for your own soul. I'm so much more happier since. I feel like I found myself and I feel like I'm going to thrive and I'm going to do what I always wanted to do. Sew and come up with pretty stuff. Love you all. Wish you all the best. Bye.